Hello, my name is Douglas Pock. I'm an author and depression counselor. Welcome to your depression recovery channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. I'm often asked this question, can you will your way out of depression and anxiety? My answer is, it depends on how severe it is. Here's an example of a case of mild anxiety. Joe is going to be interviewed for a job he really wants, but he's very anxious about it. He can calm himself down by using statements like, I have a good chance of getting this job. I'm just as qualified as the other people, etc. This is known as cognitive behavioral therapy, by which people identify thinking errors and replace them with more realistic thoughts. On the other hand, there are times when a person's anxiety or depression crosses an invisible threshold and becomes extreme hopelessness and extreme fear. This is no longer a thinking problem, this is a biochemical problem. And treating this type of biochemical depression is not an easy thing. For example, during my last episode, I was admitted to a local uh, hospital after I had experienced days of agitation that I couldn't control. I went into the hospital and asked the nurse to give me a major tranquilizer to calm me down. She said, no, just sit down and breathe and you can stop this agitation. I said, no, I can't. This is why I was admitted to the hospital. Please call the psychiatrist and get me a medication. She was unmoved and even threatened to put me in a straitjacket. Unfortunately, this scenario was repeated two months later when I entered a second hospital. Upon seeing my agitation, the mental health therapist took me aside and said, why can't you sit down and just use the tools you learned in graduate school like cognitive therapy and quiet your mind and that will help with the agitation. A clonopin would be more effective, I said. For listeners who don't know, a clonopin is a minor tranquilizer like Xanax or Valium. You can control your thoughts without medication, he said. Don't you understand, I replied. I am not in control of my nervous system. I am not in control of my nervous system. I am not in control of my nervous system. Such a lack of compassion shows a very important thing is that when the brain gets sufficiently chemically imbalanced, a person cannot hold a positive thought over a period of time. This shows that depression and anxiety are not conscious choices any more than having cancer or having diabetes is a conscious choice. When you look at the symptoms of depression, which include depressed mood most of the day, diminished interest in pleasure, changes in appetite, insomnia, psychomotor agitation nearly every day, fatigue, loss of energy nearly every day, diminished ability to think or to concentrate, suicidal ideation. You can see clearly that these are biological and biochemical maladies, and no amount of willpower can change that. Therefore, if you meet a person going through severe depression or anxiety, please don't tell them to snap out of it or to think positively. Show your compassion by asking, is there anything that I can do to help? That would be more helpful to them than telling them to change their mind or to change their thinking. This is Douglas Block. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something from it. If you want to know more about this work, go to healingfromdepression.com or click on the links in the closing credits. And until we meet again, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you.